Today I'm going to photograph a pine tree forest during winter using my trusty 24 to 105 uh, lens on a full frame body. Uh, I will share with you why I choose uh, to photograph in this forest and not other forest uh, in this moment. And uh, let's see what shots I can find, what compositions, and share with you some tips and suggestions for a situation like this. It's pretty cold this morning, minus seven degrees. I'm Toma, Photo Tom here on YouTube and this channel is all about landscape photography. So if you're interested in this topic, make sure to subscribe. Also, if you want to support me, you can buy my ebook on landscape photography, where I talk about my philosophy on landscape photography, choosing a subject composition, and I, uh, I show to you 50 case studies where I talk about settings, the gear I use, the editing that I'm doing, all sorts of things. So if you're interested in this, uh, again, go to the link in the description and find all the details there. Now, let's get back to this really beautiful pine tree forest and let's see what I can find. So I'm in a pine tree forest and I'm at the base of a mountain and the reasons I came to this forest is because it's, it's about pine trees and I see some green and uh, other forests have no leaves on them. They look really, really bad in this time of year. And the second reason is because I have the chance of seeing some snow on the ground because again there is no grass on the ground so I need to... Uh, compensate in a way for that awful look nature has. There are still two more months with nature looking like this and, and these are the worst months uh, for a landscape photographer. <laughs> the first tip I have for you is to be careful with white balance. There are a couple of things that influence how the white balance look inside the forest. First of all you have a white coat of snow and this will reflect the green of the pine trees, the blue of the sky. So it depends on how much light you have, if you see the sun or not, if you have uh, a, uh, a visible sky or not. But the way I'm trying to compensate is to use a cloudy white balance. If the scene gets too blue, I'm using a shade white balance. Now, you could say that I, uh, I can adjust this in post, but I really like to see um, the result that is closer to uh, what I have in my mind with, uh, with the shot. The first uh, composition is very simple and it's very straightforward. Uh, in a situation like this, I'm on a road, so uh, the first thing that I will photograph is the, uh, the road that goes through the forest. I found an interesting tree over there that has a branch covered in a little bit of snow and that branch uh, hovers above the, the road. In the distance the trees form uh, kind of like a tunnel. So I'm getting an interesting, uh, an interesting view of the road. I'm sitting on one side of the, road because of the road because I want to create a slight diagonal in the shot. And the, the settings are f8. Uh, ISO 100 and one fifth of second. In this situation, um, the differences in light between the white of the snow and the darkness of the forest were too big. So I had to do a bracketing uh, for this scene just to make sure that I have all the details. Now, I liked this trunk uh, of, a, of the fallen tree that goes to its root, and then I'm having the darkness of the forest uh, behind it. And I think it's a, uh, it's a scene that reminds me of a painting. I think that is the reason for which I, I stopped and tried to see if I can find an interesting composition over here.
Last week I had a workshop here on top of this mountain. So uh, it was beautiful but really difficult because of the snow. This tree over here looks really well. Uh, again, the branches have a little bit of snow on them and it looks interesting. Uh, I have to see how I'm going to compose it and how I'm going to frame it, but it looks nice. I went for this uh, framing. I really liked the branches that were reaching out to me and the darkness of the forest behind the tree. That gives it this gloomy, eerie look. The shape of the of the trees, the way the trees are positioned over there, like straight lines, and that darkness of the forest. I think I don't know I don't know how to call this feeling, but it's mesmerizing, hypnotizing. It looks really, really well. It, I don't know, it kind of draws you in, into the forest. It's, it's mysterious. It's something that is completely different. And the settings, uh, 0.6 seconds, F8 and ISO 100. The darkness of the forest, I think it looks really, really well. inside the forest looks really well so let's try and see how we can photograph it in these situations I pay close attention to the edges of the of the photo I really want to have big and imposing elements that will force the attention of the viewer to stay inside the photo then I try to make some order in this chaos of the forest. The snow helps a little bit. It gets, it gets rid of the clutter on the ground, but um, the rest of the chaos, it's, it's still there. So I need to find areas where the trees kind of form an interesting um, or have an interesting uh, placement. found this area of relative shadows and I'm photographing over there into the light making sure I'm capturing the darkness from one side and the other and creating that sensation of a tunnel this was it for today I hope you like it don't forget about uh, my ebook on landscape photography or maybe you're interested in an editing course how I'm editing my foggy forests the link is in the description of this video until next time, keep on photographing because it's the only way that you can get better. Bye-bye.